Right here. Yes. I never expected two decorated soldiers to get knocked out of my own home. No, just one, sir. Oh, that's right, Mr. Woodman. You were too fast for Carlton. I was. They started talking to Valerie, and she's not well, and please, darling girl, stop crying. It's only natural for her to cry, baby. She just found out her friend is dead. We couldn't keep it from her for forever. I'm not so ill that I can't talk to people. You leave me here with this invalid when you know very well that I think she Maybe. should be hospitalized. It's for her own good. Don't ever say that to me again. I can't handle it. I've seen David O. Russell's brand new movie called Amsterdam, and it stars everybody in Hollywood. We've got Margot Robbie in this thing. We've got Christian Bale. We've got John David Washington, Michael Shannon, Mike Myers, Taylor Swift, Chris Rock. I mean, I, I, Robert De Niro. It just keeps going and going and going. And watching this movie felt a lot to me like watching a game show and they've got like one door that opens and then one box that opens and it's like we got this too we got that we got this we got that and it was so unnerving and so unsettling to watch this kind of showy show offy piece of show business I, I just couldn't sit with it. I was like, I'm not, I don't feel anything. I'm not being taken on this ride with these characters and this story because it just feels like stunt casting 1000, you know? It's just, it was insanity. And it's too bad because there's some interesting ideas in this movie. It's a story of a couple of World War One veterans that meet up with this nurse over in Europe in Amsterdam. And they sort of bond and they create this trio, this inseparable trio, and they kind of find a love and care for each other. They're each going to look out for each other. There is this cute scene in the beginning of the movie where the three of them throw a bunch of mismatched phrases and ideas into a hat and they pull out all these slips of paper and they come up with this improvised song, which is supposed to be this silly, incomprehensible piece of music and they're harmonizing and it's quite catchy and it's cute. But that kind of typifies the whole experience of seeing this movie. It just is a bunch of jibber-jabber and meaningless nonsense happening throughout the whole picture. And then, of course, there has to be some dramatic uptick in this movie. And then one of them, Christian Bale's character, who plays a doctor, decides he has to go back to New York to try to reconcile with his family and to help some of the veterans that are coming back from the war, which was kind of cool and altruistic. And then we see, you know, the story pivots and he's having a hard time being a vet back in New York. And then eventually John David Washington's character, Harold, comes back to to try to come and help his friend Bert, the doctor, and they get somehow embroiled in this weird murder conspiracy tale that has echoes of some of the fascism that they were sent overseas to fight. And I'm not going to go too deep into spoiling stuff in here, but suffice to say, they get sucked into something that is much larger than them, which has repercussions across the city of New York, especially within the biggest halls of power and the highest echelons of wealth that live in the city. And so I think there is enough interesting elements in here to build a story that might feel a little like Chinatown or a Raymond Chandler detective novel or something like that, because it's set in the 30s and it's got a bunch of broken people trying to get by in this big city and lots of character pieces. Rami Malek is in there. I'm not going to be able to remember everybody it's just it's a massive cast and there's just so many showy bits of business you know from all of these different characters but what undoes this story and these characters partly is the stunt casting but also the cinematography is kind of brutal for this i mean there's some beautiful shots and beautiful visual effect shots that sell the idea that we're in the 30s but the camera is tight on the characters. The characters have to do loopy, crazy faces because they're all shot up and healed. And, you know, Christian Bale has to play with a glass eye. And people have big scars and gouges in them because they're back from World War I. But everybody's kind of clowning all the time. And so it's not only tight shots on actors being goofy with goofy faces and interesting prosthetics and stuff, but we also have tight shots with crowds of these famous people trying to kind of squeak into frame. And it's like, I wish the camera would just pull back and let us live in the world a little bit more. And I also wish that the story was the primary element that was driving everything forward. And it's really not. It's really this mash of different characters. At one point in this movie, we've got actors actually staring directly at the camera and saying nothing but Amsterdam. Amsterdam. As if we're going to 
forget the picture, and it's like they're wanting to send us home with the memory of what this title is, what the title of this movie is. I, I do have to say that Mike Myers is absolutely huge stunt casting in this, and you can't ever forget that you're watching Mike Myers riff on something, but his performance is unbelievable. Like, he is really good and subtle and nuanced. He's got a British accent and a glass eye, because that's what his character's all about. Uh, but, I, I, you know, I was like, man, that, that is kind of an intriguing person that Mike Myers has built. I almost want to go and follow that story a little bit more. And it's not to say that there isn't some charm and some good moments scattered throughout here. Chris Rock's got a couple of funny bits in the thing. It holds your attention, but you're watching it and you're forgetting what the whole story is about and why all of these characters are put together, why all of these famous actors are put together. You're just kind of watching like an award show. It just it was just so weird, you know, and underdeveloped. It almost feels like the movie needed some more time in the oven to kind of prep and cook and, and prepare and then come back with something. This should have been terrific. David O. Russell has made some really cool movies. My favorite of his is still Three Kings, but he did The Fighter with Christian Bale and Silver Linings Playbook. He's got a long history. He's also got a long history of being confrontational with his talent, and he's got a, a lot of controversy that has followed him in his career and I don't know what the deal was with this movie but it felt like everybody was so cartoonish and affected and and so artificial in, in a, an attempt to be comedic and, and have this kind of lighter touch over these dark themes that are presented in this picture, sort of in the vein of something we might see from the Coen brothers or Wes Anderson or whatever, but it just doesn't have any emotional magnitude. There's no sort of punch in this film that registers and makes you really care. You know, and that's the unfortunate thing. All of that star wattage and that star power. And I don't know if it was because they put this all together during the pandemic and it was weird. We're so tight on the actors all the time. I saw one of the little crease lines in Rami Malik's cheek where he must have taken his mask off. And I thought at first, is that a little scar on the character? And it's like, nope, he's got a, he's got a face mask line on his face. And I think DOPs and directors have to pay attention to that as they're shooting people, you know, through the pandemic like this. And it's really just too bad because even though there's some good efforts and some interesting work in here, it doesn't come together. So I walked away from Amsterdam going, what the hell just happened? And what did I just see? I'm going to give Amsterdam a 4.5 out of 10. Mm -hmm. 